Do you think, like, in the sense that it's sort of, um, I mean, I read the Rolling Stone article and they compare the whole thing to, like, the Grateful Dead where there's these loyal people right. who want to hear that music. Do you mind the comparison? I don't mind the comparison at all as long as th that particular article, um, that guy, uh, Jeff Giles, who wrote that article, he thought he, re he listened to the albums, he listened to the music, and uh, in the article he said there was a, a similarity to the, to the Grateful Dead setup, though he didn't think the music sounded like it. And I'll give you a quick example. If you've ever heard the Spin Doctors, um, anybody who thinks that the Spin Doctors sound anything like the Grateful Dead has got to be whacked. I mean, it's not even in the same you know, general ballpark. So, uh, but the Spin Doctors are still compared to the Dead, and a lot of that has to do with something about just the crowds that are a lot of popular, you know, tie dyes, and you see that a lot at a lot of different concerts. And the Spin Doctors concerts, you see this. Uh, so people kind of tie that in with the dead. But there are similarities in the business aspect of all five bands to the dead setup, and that is that it's a family sort of organization where the crew members are treated as family members. They're generally given benefits, health insurance. They're, it's not like you're a hired person. Um, and I think that that's the biggest similarity, other than the fact that all five bands improvise on stage and do a different set every night. And that attracts uh, deadhead type uh, music and listeners and people that that will travel around to yeah. the bands since each night's going to be different. And yeah, each song and each time they they play a song, it'll be different too. Right, it's hopefully. always a different thing. Hopefully, and and the the idea is to never do the same show twice. But really, I think the gist of it, what's tying it all together, and why people are making some Grateful Dead comparisons, probably, is that uh, there's been a to me to my ears there's been a real lack of bands that, that their focus is playing live. Most bands through the 80s, um, their focus was making albums and they toured to, to support the album. All five of these bands are live bands. They play live and that's what they do. They also make albums. And hopefully we can make some great albums in the future. I think all five bands would say this. But the, the immediate goal is to play live and support yourself. And that's what all five bands are doing. And that's why we brought it together. Um... So, um, uh, um, tell me, you know, tell me about the groupies and, like, this loyal, hardcore following that follows you, if there is one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, actually, they're, they've grown slowly o over the years. Maybe for all the bands, it's sort of a similar kind of scene, it's not exactly the same. Um, and, uh, they've grown on their own by trading tapes and that sort of thing, and, uh, just word of mouth. And the first time we got to California, the show sold out because people had already heard our, you know, we didn't have a record deal or anything like that. But people heard, heard the tape. Like tape. Yeah. Um, Do you mind people bootlegging? Not at all. It's been, bootlegging, bootlegging tapes has been what made us what we are. Who we am. Who we am. So, the bootleg tapes, okay. Um, people tape the shows they trade these tapes and what we've got set up for us right now I'll speak about us because all five bands have sort of similar things Are we run um, all, all five bands have similar uh, sort of a similar situation but for us we've got a very large mailing list we've got about 17,000 names on our mailing list and that's growing uh, and we've got our um, um, some of our fans have set up this thing called the fishnet computer network uh, international computer network and Anyone who has a computer can get on this thing. It tells you they have tape trees. For instance, this Horde show, whichever one they are going to allow taping at. Some of them they don't allow taping, but um, we'll take a tape from the Horde show. We won't. Some fan will. And they'll put it on a tape tree on the fishnet. And within a few days, 500 fish tapes from this particular show will be out there. Um, and it's just a way of getting the music around. Uh, and it keeps us on our toes because knowing that the tapes are going to be out there means that every night you've got to do something new. If something exciting happens, you know, the easiest step would be, well, let's rest on our, on our laurels and do the same thing again. But you can't do that because you know that everybody's going to know it's been done before. So you really want to be moving forward, something different, something different. Uh, tonight, there's something that we did a couple nights ago that I really thought was cool, that was a new thing. And backstage, we were just talking about, should we do that again? And, all right, well... We better just try to think of something else. <laughs>
Okay, we're rolling. Or were we talking about something else? Um, you were talking about the uh, <laughs> the fan, the, oh. the fans, the following. Yeah. Are we are we rolling? I gotta we're rolling. <laughs> Groupies. I've missed that part of rock and roll. I don't know. I'm telling you the truth. You have no groupies. We don't have groupies. I mean, we have plenty of big time fans who 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 are uh, who are. Uh, I, this word has been on the tip of my tongue throughout this whole conversation. Um, Loyal, dedicated. No, more than that. About hardcore. No, it, it was in the Rolling Stone article. Oh. Obsessed. Obsessed. I mean, it's an obsessive kind of thing. Actually, hit it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit it. Well, let me just finish. No, and then hit it. Um, they get. There's a lot. We have a lot of intricate lyrics in our in our songs that that to someone who picks up the album and has never heard the band before might think is sort of gobbledygook. And really, there are parts. There's characters that run through a lot of different songs, and it takes a long time to to unravel all the the storyline to a lot of this stuff and um, so people get involved in the band and they realize that there's all these different levels of, of stories going on of the characters and the different lands and stuff um, so it becomes sort of an obsession I think with certain people and since it's different every night and always changing then when they come to the concert and they're and something genuine happens they're a part the fan is a part of a genuine event that's happening right at that moment, and that feeling, I don't think they ever shake it. It's when you know when they come to a concert and something spurs, you know, spur the moment. Incredible, exciting thing happens, and they're part of it because they're, you know, we're feeding off their energy and they're they're sitting in the same. We're all in one room doing this thing together, whatever it may be, and uh, you can't shake that. That that stays with you, and and you're you're kind of hooked to use a little fish pun. Yeah, I was just going to say sort of the same thing.